Paul and sharing this church service with you. And so sorry that my wife and three other of our boys weren't able to be here. Um, the ones that you have not met are actually back home with her. And so but you, we, you get to see some of the older ones here today and see how they've grown and they have grown. It's hard to believe how quickly they grow. You know, and it's just, you look back at pictures of them being on deputation or even back in the Dominican Republic and we see pictures or videos of them and you see how quickly they grow up and the stages of life that they go through and it's hard to believe, you know, how time flies, but it sure does. And uh, it just makes you want to value your time more and more because we know how precious time really is. Um, but I just want to say thank you all. And my wife also mentions her thank you and, and we greatly appreciate and love you all, each and every one of you. But from the time uh, that we spent on the field, you know, we left for the Dominican Republic and we got to spend a term there serving with another missionary family. And while we were on the field, God gave us the experiences, the help that we needed to learn the language. Um, there was a lot going on. Y'all remember, everybody remember COVID <laughs> and what we went through there? Well, we went to the field right towards the end of COVID as everything was kind of winded down a little bit. But um, in the Dominican Republic, we were still going through the restrictions and the curfews that they had there in the, on the field. Um, there were places that we couldn't enter into without either we had to have a vaccination card or we had to show them, you know, that we had recently taken um, a negative COVID test. And so we had to do, go through that every few weeks in order to go sh grocery shopping. Uh, they had moved curfew to about six or seven o'clock in the evening uh, there in the DR. And so they rolled up the sidewalks, as Barney Fife said. Uh, and <laughs> so they would roll up the sidewalks and, uh, and we had to be indoors, you know, we couldn't be out there on the streets. Um, but uh, that was the way of life as we had to adjust to it there in the Dominican Republic at that time. And, but God helped us during those times and we got to reach many people for the Lord. Uh, we got to, to see the Lord work in great mighty ways. Uh, and we saw some souls saved, come to know Christ as their Savior. But the key to being there in the Dominican Republic, what we had to learn out there on the field was the language. And we know that reaching the people with the gospel, the key was the language. And they do speak Spanish there. They are mainly Roman Catholic in their religion. And so we had to learn uh, Spanish during our time there, but God helped us with that. There were moments, especially at the beginning of, of being there on the field where I was wondering myself if I would ever learn the language. I uh, needed a lot of help and a lot of prayers at that time, but God helped me along the way. Uh, he gave us the grace that we needed to get through that and to learn what we needed to learn. And so, thank the Lord, I'm now able to preach, to teach, to soul win, to do everything I need to do to minister there in Spanish. And so, God has given us the, the help with that. Brittany has come a long way in her Spanish also. The boys are learning Spanish along, right along with us. And uh, with their young age and their minds, they soak it up like a sponge, you know. And so, God has helped us all, each and every one of us, with the Spanish language. And that's helped us for the next steps in our ministry because... In June, June the 27th is our uh, going back to the field date. And so we've already purchased tickets and we're all ready to roll with that. Uh, but June the 27th, we head back and that's going to start us with our first church plant in a new location in the Dominican Republic. We're very excited about that. And so just please be in prayer for us as we start the next phases in our ministry. And as we go back towards the field, but it's, there's a lot of exciting things about what the Lord has done and what we look forward to seeing God do there. Um, but during our time while we were in the Dominican Republic, as I mentioned, we were able to learn the language. But we served there in different ministries while on the field. And God gave us some help, some experiences that we needed. Uh, my wife was able to minister there and teaching in part of the Christian school. So there were parts of the day that she would go down and she would teach in the Christian school there. I also preached in chapel services in the Christian school. I taught Bible classes. We had about 150 school kids there in, in our um, Christian school. 
that would come in from the public. Many of them had never stepped foot into a church before. And so it was a great opportunity to be able to reach them with the gospel as well as their families. We got to see some of those children come to know Christ their Savior. And then they got baptized, got involved in the, in the youth group. And uh, we got to be able to reach their families through that. And so God was working in that ministry outreach of the Christian school there. Um, we also had soul winning throughout the week. We tried to reach people with the gospel. And God gave fruit through that. We had a, a national pastor seminary or seminar, seminar uh, that we would have every single Saturday. And so we would have a group of about 15 students that would come in to be trained in, the, in Bible doctrines. And so I would have a part in that. And, uh, and we got to see some fruit from that. Um, it was just a great work going on there at New Life Baptist Church in the Capitol. And so uh, there were about 3.7 million people that are in the capital city of Santo Domingo, in the area that we were moving to. And where we are from, where I grew up, is Medivine, Virginia, right down the road from Abingdon, Bristol area. It's about two hours away from here. And it's very similar to Roanoke, um, even on a smaller scale than that. I grew up in the country, in the mountains there. And so the people ask us, you know, what was the biggest shock for you going to a different place, to a different location, uh, the culture and everything? Well, the biggest shock for us was moving from the country to the city because I am not used to, to living in a big city. And so it was completely different for us on a, on a large scale because our boys, they were used to running in the backyard, playing in the creek, you know, catching frogs and minnows and crawdads and all, that, all kinds of good things. And so that was how they grew up and we grew up. Um, but we moved into an apartment where you've got people above you, people below you. There's this, the streets, what they call the, the concrete jungle. And there's not a lot of grass there, not a lot of area, a safe area where they can run out and play in a backyard. And so they would basically have to wait till daddy came home and then we would go out, you know, and take them outside. But a lot of the time, the, the kids, we all had to adjust to different changes of life. And even the kids, you know, it affected all of us. Uh, but a lot of times they were indoors and they were doing schoolwork and stuff, but playtime was indoors until, until we were able to take them outside because there was just some of the areas was unsafe to go to uh, without, without me being there or uh, also with Brittany. But there were times where, where it was unsafe even for Brittany to go out alone without me being there. And so it was just a different way of life, a different, some different adjustments that we had to make. Um, but but we, while we were on the field, we got to see the fruit of what God can do and how God works, you know. And, uh, and it's all for the glory of God. Even in the times where we may have to go through things that we may not necessarily like in our flesh, uh, God gives us the grace. And we're able to see God work miracles and do great and mighty things. And it's all worth it all for the glory of God. It's all worth it all. Um, but... So anyway, there would be times, you know, where they, we would be in an apartment and we had people below us and the boys, they couldn't run around like they would normally want to. <laughs> Somebody down below, they would hit, they would come up and they would say, they would knock on our door and say, I heard a basketball being dribbled down downstairs. Can y'all make sure that the basketballs don't get dribbled? <laughs> and so uh, there were times, you know, where we had to adjust the way of life and different things and, and just to accommodate. But... Uh, when we go back, good news, when we go back, we've got a home, a house, where we don't have to worry about neighbors below us. The boys, they can go out in the yard, they can play, they can throw a football, they can uh, play with basketball. And so it's, it's going to be a better living quarters for us and for the children. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, God has provided a good place for us and for our home and for our family uh, to be able to go back and to live in while we were starting our first church plan. And so that was one of the prayer request that we had as a family, you know, because we had seen the downsides and how how it would be difficult for our children to grow up in, a, in an apartment like that. And so we wanted, we, we did have some prayers. And I thank God that, that He cares about the little things. And, uh, and so we got some running around space for the kids now where they can go out and not have to worry about being in danger. They're all in their, in their own little yard. Um, everything is secluded there for the boys. And we're also in a good area with a lot of people around by, behind us and where we live to be able to reach them with the gospel. One of the, uh, 
One of the good things about where we're moving to in Puerto Plata is that it's a city of 150,000 and the Providence itself, there's 300,000. But as far as we know, and I've scouted out the area quite a bit, going and looking and, and visiting different places, there's only one other church that's preaching the gospel to a, a city of 150,000 people. And so there is a great need there. There is a great need. And God is, uh, has been working in our hearts for this place for a long time now. And we're excited to be able to go back and start our first church plan. And so just continue, continue to remember us in your prayers as we go back in June. Now, Brittany and I, we go back also before our move over as a family. Brittany and I are going down to get the house ready. And all of our stuff right now, our belongings are in storage in the capital. And so we've got a trip of about four hours from the capital to move all our belongings up north. And so please be in prayer for that, that everything goes well. Uh, I've been in contact with the moving company there to help us out with that. And so, Lord willing, everything should go according to plan. But you know how that can go and how that can be sometimes. It doesn't always happen that way. But we serve a great God. And he able, he's able to hear our prayer requests. And so please pray for us as we try to make this new transition. And we leave tomorrow, Brittany and I. We go down tomorrow. And uh, also another prayer request that I do have is where I had mentioned that the baby wasn't feeling well this morning. You know how that can play on a mother's heart and, uh, and just the concerns there. We've got good family members that are going to be able to watch after the kids and take well care, good, good, good care of them, but it also just work, can be worrisome to a mother's heart and uh, leaving the kids behind, especially if one of them's not feeling good. And so, please pray that the baby uh, starts to feel better, and uh, and that it's you know that it's nothing because he woke up this morning with an upset stomach, and we didn't want to bring him along on the trip just in case it was something like a virus. But just pray that if it that that it's not a virus and it was just. Uh, just an upset stomach, maybe something he had eaten. But uh, but just pl please pray for those things, and uh, and God knows, and the Lord's able to answer and uh, and able to help, you know. But we look forward to going down, and we're going to get the house cleaned and set up and ready, and then get our furniture moved up, get the uh, air conditioners installed, because somebody was asking us, is it hot down there all the time? Yes, it is hot down there all the time all the time and so we during the day we usually have our fans are going at night we'll run the air conditioners just to kind of cool it off while we sleep um, but it's it's pretty warm in the Dominican Republic it, the temperatures usually range from about 86 degrees to mid 90s uh, during the hot months and so uh, there's just hot temperatures a lot of humidity there um, but thank the Lord that God give us uh, some comfort, com comfortableness <laughs> within the home. Um, but this morning, I wanted to share all those things with you so that way you get an idea of what's been going on and as far as what we have in store for the future. Please be in prayer for those things. But I also wanted to share something from the Word of the Lord this morning with you all during the Sunday school hour. And so if you would, please turn over in your Bibles to Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number four, and it is good to be with you all today and thank the Lord for just what he does for us. He is good to us all the time. His mercy is new every morning. Uh, there's there's so many things that we can praise God for. Philippians chapter number number four. We'll read down through a few verses here and the Bible, beginning with verse number one, the Bible says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for my joy and my crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you at us and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also. And with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. 
Let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be, to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this time that we're able to gather to your house. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person here. Thank you for Pastor Paul, Sister Paul. Thank you for Montvale Baptist Church. God, I pray that you please bless each and every member. And Lord, I pray that you bless our time together today. Lord, as we meet together, we know that we need you. Lord, we need your presence and your touch and your help today. I pray that you would please encourage us by your word. And Lord, I pray that we would be strengthened and be edified and be changed to be more like Christ is my prayer. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beginning in this chapter, we see Paul writing to the church of Philippi. And Philippi was one of the great works that God had worked there in the area of Macedonia that Paul was able to reach and to be able to, to instruct them and to help them in the gospel. And we see just how important these people were to Paul and the love that he had for them and the instruction that he gave them and how, how his heart was dear and close to them. Beginning with verse number one, he says, My brethren, dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown. So this was a church that he had ministered to, that he had loved and that he had cherished. And he said they were beloved, that he longed for them, that he desired to see them. As it is mentioned in verse number 22, he says that they that are of Caesar's household salute them. And so Paul was away from them at this time. He was unable to reach them or to go to them, but he wrote this letter to the church of Philippi and he was greeting them from a distance, from all the way from Caesar's house. And he was mentioning to them that they were a joy and a crown to him, that they were an adorning, that they were something that he had invested in, a church and people's lives that he had invested in. And he said that they were a crown to him. They were a joy to him. But he also gives them some instruction. In verse number two, he begins that by saying that he beseeches or he pleads with Euodus and Syntyche. They were, I looked up the names here because I wasn't really sure were these men's names or women's, women's names, but they are two ladies, um, according to what I studied, two women of the church there at Philippi. Apparently they had had some disagreements Something had gone on, but they weren't working together and they weren't of the same mind. And so, so he said, I am beseeching you, 
that, that you be of the same mind in the Lord. You know, there's, there's often times that we have, all, all of us can have disagreements. We can have differences in opinions. We can have different likes and dislikes. We may go through the line here at lunchtime when we see somebody getting a hot dog. We may see somebody that just wants a hamburger. We may see somebody that gets them both. And I may be one of those that get them both because I like them both. But we all have different likes and different dislikes and what we, what we prefer and not prefer. And so Judas and Syntyche, apparently they had had some disagreements. But he says, be of the same mind in the Lord. You know, we can have different agreements. Opinions, different characteristics, different personalities, and that's okay. But when it comes to God's Word, we can all have the same mind. We can all be one in the Lord. We can all be come to an agreement because we've got the same Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. And He says one thing to us. He gives us the truth, right? He gives us the truth of God's Word. And so we have got the foundation. We've got the truth. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got Christ. And so we can be of the same mind in the Lord. Even whenever we have differences in personalities or different likes or dislikes, we can all come together when it comes to Christ. In verse number three, he continues on and he says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. So these are people that had labored with him in the gospel. They were, they were true believers. He says, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. So he's telling the church that there were some that had helped him, that had labored with him. And he said they are continuing to labor on. And he says, I want others to join hands. He says, we can't do it alone. We need to join hands together. Everybody's got to have a part. We're all in this together. We're all serving the Lord. And so Paul is admonishing them and saying, join hands together. Uh, yoke up together. You know what a yoke is? Everybody in here should know that a yoke is what they would use to go across the oxen as they would plow the fields and they would yoke them up together and the oxen uh, should be at equal with one another and plowing the field and they would be harnessed together on a team, the same team, plowing the field. God says we are to yoke up with one another to help plow the field for the harvest is plenteous. The fields are white, the Bible says. We've got people out there in need of the gospel, need to hear the word of the Lord. And we're to work together on a team. Fellow laborers for the cause of Christ. He says, so join together, join hands together. Then after that, in verse number four, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So we've got something to rejoice in. Something that Satan cannot take away from us. We've got a salvation that is eternal, a salvation that is everlasting. Something, a joy that cannot be robbed or cannot be taken away in whatever moment or whatever uh, area or whatever place we find ourselves in in life. We've got a joy that is unstoppable. We've got a joy that cannot be taken away. So we can rejoice in the Lord always. That is putting that joy and expressing it. Taking that joy that is already there, given to us by the fruit of the Spirit, and expressing it in worship to God. Praising the Lord. Rejoicing. Rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And so he says, rejoice the Lord continually. Un unstoppable. Always. Verse number five, he said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. That word moderation there talking about gentleness. Talks about refraining from violence. It's talking about having your body under control. There's different facets of this word that come out of the scripture here. But he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Unto each and every person where everybody can see God working in your life in and through you. To where everybody else can see that Jesus Christ is alive in you. That where we can be a, a light shining forth, spreading the gospel. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Everybody can see that the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you. That God is real through your testimony. That you are a living Bible. <clears throat> Let your moderation 
be known unto all men. And you know, there's times where the flesh kind of gets in the way, where we don't always show moderation, where we don't always show gentleness or kindness or the love of God. There's times where we get influenced by things that are out there in the world or by pressures of life. You know, it's, it's easy to, to show the light of Jesus Christ whenever, whenever everything's going good. But what about the times where things aren't going good? The times where things are going rough in your life or bad or situations that aren't good that you go through. What about at a, at a traffic light and somebody won't go whenever they're supposed to be going or, or somebody slows down in front of you or, or somebody has road rage and cuts you off? What about if somebody gets in line in front of you at the grocery store and, and they weren't supposed to and you were in that spot? Somebody takes your parking place and whips right in front of you. You know, there's times where the flesh can get in the way where we feel like that's a time where, where we should we have the right to be angry. But the Bible says, let your moderation be known unto all men and each and every person. Every situation, we ought to be able to con control our flesh at times where people can see the light of Jesus Christ. And, and it, it's in those hard moments, in the difficult moments, where the light, where our light can shine the brightest. I've seen some of my family members go through hard and difficult things. My sister right now is in the hospital. She's been in the hospital since September. Uh, she's 35 years old and she's had a lot of health concerns, health problems her entire life. She's had to have double open heart surgery. Uh, her kidneys are failing. She's on dialysis about two to three times a week. Her body is just shutting down. She, she became paralyzed from the waist down in September and is un unable to move. I went and visited her yesterday in the hospital. And uh, I'm glad that, that I've been able to, to visit her and spend time with her when, since we've been back. Um, but I've seen her go through some things. And I continue to go back and to visit her. And I continue to see the smile on her face. I see joy in her heart. I see all the hard things that she goes through. She's got a little uh, adopted daughter and she has to leave her at home. And I see the, the heartaches, you know, in her life and the struggles that she goes through. But yet she maintains a joy, a, a peace that passes all understanding that nobody can explain but God. And I see all this in her life and and I know that she is letting her light shine. And even in the darkest of circumstances. And it's amazing to me how some people can go through some of the hardest things, but yet they've got some of the greatest joy. Y'all ever met a person like that? I've seen it. I've seen it in my family. I've seen it in my sister. People that have gone through struggles of life, but yet you talk to them and you see Christ. You see the, the light of God in their life. And you see a, a heart that's, that's joy, joyful and overflowing. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. We can say that today. Today in, in May of 2024, it's hard to believe that we have come this far. I've heard it preached my entire life that Christ is coming soon. I know that before I was even born that you were hearing it preached that Christ is coming soon. We know that the Lord is at hand. We, we believe that, that He could step out of the clouds at any moment and call the church home. We know that. The Lord is at hand and that ought to make us in 2024 all the more focused and all the more apt to go and to tell people about Jesus Christ because we know that the Lord is coming too soon and our time here is short. Verse number six, he continues on. He says, be careful for nothing. Don't allow fear to get in the way that that ought not be there. The Bible said that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. That God has given us that sound mind. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God that we can pray and, and we can worship the Lord in our prayer. And we can also come before God with thanksgiving in our hearts. And then with that, God says, let your request be made known unto God. 
we can come before God. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't say, well, bring the big request before God. Or bring only the things that matter before God. Or bring only, you know, the, the things that are that you think that God would, would think are important. It doesn't say that. It says, let your request. That means whatever you think is, is on, whatever is on your heart. Whatever you are concerned about, the small things, the, the little things, even the minute details, God cares about those things and He wants to hear those things. So we have something to be thankful for and so we can bring thanksgiving before God. And at the same time, He says, let your request be made known unto God. Every little detail, all the things that you are, uh, that are burdensome to your heart, you can lay them before God and, and just allow God to take care of all those things in your life. The worrisome things of life. And then what happens when we lay down a burden? It relieves some weight, doesn't it? It takes it off our shoulders whenever somebody comes by and pats you on the back or gives you a hug and says, I'm praying for you. I love you. What can I do to help you? That relieves some burden. That takes away some stress. That helps us. That encourages us. And so whenever we let our request be made known unto God, look at what God can do for us. It says so in the next verse. Because it says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So whenever you give your burdens over to the Lord, your request, whatever is on your heart, whatever it may be, the Bible says the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. It's something that we can't really understand. We can't explain it, but it's there. It's there. It's an anchor. It's a foundation. It's a stronghold for us. And he says it passeth all understanding, but it is the peace of God. We can have peace with God through our salvation, but the Christian also can have the peace of God through the Holy Spirit. He is the comforter. He's the one that indwells us and gives us the peace of God. It shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It'll keep your heart and mind where it needs to be in the right place. It'll keep, give you a sound mind like the Bible says. You know, in those difficult moments and the times where we struggle with things in our hearts and in our lives, in the moments where we may be going through a storm, that's where Satan wants to come by and beat us down, doesn't he? He sees us already on the ground, and so he just wants to try to step on us, make us feel even worse. But God can give us a peace of God that lifts us up out of the dust, just like he did with Job. God lifted him up. He helped him out of the situation that Job was in, God can do the same for us. He can give us a peace of God that passes all understanding, that people cannot understand, that calms the storms of our life. Jesus may be asleep on the boat, but He's in the boat. He's right there with you. Just got to cry out to Him and He can calm the storm. He can help you in those moments. Let's take the time this morning. I'm going to finish there for Sunday school hour. And we can pray, and uh, Pastor Paul, um, I'll just let you lead as you, as you see fit. But let's go ahead and pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, for the Sunday school hour that we've had. Thank you for the, your word, for the encouragement that it is to us. And I pray, God, as we leave here today, that we would be edified and lifted up, encouraged to continue on, to fight the good fight, to run the race that is set before us, Lord to walk in the Spirit, to obey You. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>